My name is Charles Hines. This poem is called Code Switch. I find comfort in my code switch, and I am prepared to apologize for that statement the same way I apologize for my existence. To be a minority is to understand it ain't safe to be yourself all the time. Have you ever watched yourself bleed? Followed a cell as it switched faces from blue to red? I imagine the release feels like a child snatched from the womb too soon. That it hits the air like an angel fallen from grace. I was taught to fear myself before I was ever taught to love myself. See, they'll never tell you how your blackness can cost you your job the same way it can cost you your life. We just know not to put Ebonics on a resume. I proved my professionalism with an origami personality like, yo mama, I, I, I made it. Just not all of me. Good impressions left good friends pressed. The kids in my hood made fun of the way I spoke. They told me I wasn't born black. Said my blackness sounded stuffed in my mouth like a size nine foot into a size six Nike. I was weird because I liked words. Everybody was wondering why I was so in love with a language that wasn't mine to begin with. Ostracized for whiteness that brought me no privilege but weaponized for blackness I had no claim to. Then I watched both parties burn crosses in the front yards of my queerness because to be any minority is to understand there is no wrong place or wrong time, just a wrong you. Maybe that's why the first thing your blood do when it touches the air is hide its true form. Even down to our molecules, we understand when we have been displaced and it is hard to explain that my culture was a death by friendly fire. Hard to swallow black values that don't value all black people. It is hard to explain that my anxiety looks exactly like white spaces that want my product but not my person. Every time the world opens its mouth to criticize, I can feel my spirit oxidize, blanketing itself in whatever the fuck you like. Too many times I've shoved my hand over my blood's mouth to stand in spots that only want pieces of me. So no, I will no longer find comfort in my code switch. And I don't apologize for this statement the same way I apologize for my existing People will tell you to hate yourself, then turn around and try to use you, break you down and abuse you. They'll credit your credentials to their code of conduct as if we don't know how to conduct ourselves. As if the keys to freedom didn't work at my own front door, but wasn't it I who studied? Was it not I who cried? Was it not I who showed up again and again and again? If I finesse the system, it's just because I'm that good. My spirit be an onion and a cake and a parfait. That shit got mad layers changing for no one but myself. If you only see one side of me, it's probably because you can't be trusted with all of me. But I've lived this long by walking in my purpose, by playing the position required for my progression. And if I live to see another day, it won't be by hiding. If I make it to the promised land, it won't be on a fake ID. I have always been and will always be me. Educated, melanated, and in every way elevated. Still me. Take it or take it. This poem is called Harambe. May 28th, 2016. A three-year-old climbs into the gorilla exposure at the Cincinnati Zoo. When one of the gorillas, a silverback named Harambe, took notice, he was shot dead to protect the life of the child. This incident sparked controversy all over. You had experts reviewing videos and reports questioning if death was the right price to pay. This was the first time I ever saw white people step outside of themselves to mourn a black body. Hashtag Justice for Harambe. I seen kids with R.I.P. Harambe shirts. They had his face on bulletin boards or at their phone screens. News stations declaring Harambe Remembrance Day. 
commemorating yet another black death that could easily have been prevented. Suddenly, white people can pronounce African names. Suddenly, they wondering if nigga, I mean, gorillas, should have been domesticated in the first place. As if Harambe wasn't already dead. As if studying a grave could bring back the life. Some say Harambe was violent. His body a weapon as he drugged the boy through the water. Some say he was a protector. Standing the child upright to check for injuries. Like some say we are violent. Our bodies natural born weapons. Some say we are the victims. With our hands stretched to the heavens in surrender. But nobody asked where the child's parents were. Or how a three year old could climb a four foot fence walk through three feet of bushes and fall down a 15 foot moat until Harambe was already dead, much like how nobody asked how colonizers could travel 3,000 miles of ocean, stretch themselves across a continent, and implement over 400 years of slavery until millions were already dead. And I wonder if in the moments when Harambe saw the child, he knew his life would be reduced to perspective. Could he hear his heartbeats muffled under everybody else's debates? Because people who aren't part of the story always seem to scream it the loudest. Harambe was shot down in his own habitat. Doing regular gorilla shit like drinking iced tea, like sleeping after a long day at work. You can't even say he was in the wrong place at the wrong time. Can't even say he acted out of character. Yo, Harambe, is it wrong that I envy you? I see my peers outraged by your death, but tell us we shouldn't have resisted. They step over our blood-stained streets too uncomfortable to react, but somehow reach across species and extend their hearts to you. Will they smell the smoking gun irony and rally behind us too when I hear your name on their lips? I can't help but wish it was Tamir or Philando or Breonna Taylor, and I pray that they would see a fraction of the humanity in us that they see in you while we are still alive. This last poem is called Broken Records. Too many songs remind me of your ass. I find myself running from radios and cringing at choruses. You got me livid with Lupe Fiasco and Childish Gambino. Look, look, they, they remind me as if I don't know. I really fucking loved you. See, I was daydreaming about you and I for more than a couple of hours, but flowers need the sunlight to grow and every beautiful day has its end. We promised 3005, but lifetime travel, this sped up, life slipped up. We got caught up in a feeling that had an expiration date. <laughs> Still I said, fuck these other niggas. I was right by your side. Until you left me in a musical minefield. Booby trapped my bass lines, ruined my riffs and runs. You flew a tornado around the rooms of my heart. I excuse the mess it made. Ain't have no business thinking about forever. But now it's taking life forever to erode your latest EP out of my ears. I guess we don't think so far ahead. And I remember, how could I forget every single thing I love so much about you? Your single still topping my charts, but I ain't even in your hot 100. In my world, your album still selling platinum. I got that feature on Spotify. I got the remix on SoundCloud. I got your mixtape on Tidal, but it still ain't enough. So I blast you out my headphones.
playing you at the highest volume I can, hoping eventually I, I just go deaf to it. But but na 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 na, I can't because because you a classic, a sweet spot, a timeless masterpiece. But I wish my heart would stop making song requests. Wish I could stop listening to grief's greatest hits. Wish I would just drop the mic or change the station. But but no 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 no, you ain't never collected dust. Cause I listen to you all the time. You get stuck in my head at all the worst of times. I know each verse by heart because you resonate in me like a good hook. Like R&B, your rhythms give me the blues. Like John Legend, all of me misses all of you. Please save room for my love. Like some Ari Linux, you got me eating whipped cream, hoping time break me off some healing. Like, like, like Kanye, this shit ain't kill me, but I don't know if it made me no stronger. Like Motown, your temptation still reigns supreme, and I often wonder who's loving you. And if you ever crave the nostalgia of my voice, you ever miss those melodies that bring back memories of good times and are still in your collection? And would you be willing to listen to me one last time?